Hello everyone, Wise Guy here, and it's now time for episode 5 of my Logistic Pipe tutorial. Uh, today I wanted to go over a few more things that were asked in the comments uh, before we get into practical setups, which will be in tomorrow's episode. Um, people were asking me about logistic power junctions and the power system in general, logistic entrance and destination pipes, frequency cards, inventory connector pipes, and some of the other things I didn't meet, uh, mention yet that are really new features, and they definitely do need to be discussed. So I apologize for not bringing them up when I talked about other pipes and modules, but they do deserve their own video, being new features, and some of them are even being tested, they don't even have recipes yet. So let me go ahead and talk about the power system first, and let me get a few things set up, and we can get started. Alright guys, so we're all set up and ready to show you the logistic power junction. Now, power junction is what you're going to need to power your logistic pipe system. Every network's going to need at least one of these, and depending on your setup, you might want more than one. Uh, this is going to convert EU from Industrial Craft or um, Minecraft Jewels or MJ from Buildcraft. You can see the recipe right here: three iron ingots, two redstone, basic logistic pipe, two up here, and a golden gear or golden chip set. Um, I've said it on every other video, I'll say it here as well, the chipset's going to be cheaper gold-wise for you, and will always be true for logistic pipes. So basically for a power junction to work, you need to have it hooked into your logistic pipe network somewhere, and I went ahead and set up a few things here for us. And you're going to need some sort of power source, so let me go ahead and show you right here, we can do this with the fiber cable here running off of a single high voltage solar panel. When you place this down, you see this really cool connection here. And that basically tells you that it's supplying power to this network, and it doesn't need any specific pipe, I just put a basic logistic pipe down. Now if you open this interface, you can actually see that it's storing energy and it tells you what the conversion is. So one Minecraft Joule equals 5 LP, or logistic power. One EU equals 2 LP, so this is filling up pretty slow because I'm using EU through the fiber cable here on the side. I can go ahead and speed that up some by using a engine from Forestry called the uh, Electric Engine. You can do a redstone engine as you want as well, and this produces Minecraft Jewels, or MJ. You'll see that this is filling up a lot faster because for each MJ this is outputting, I get 5 logistic power. And as this fills up, it is actually providing energy to our network. As you do certain things, uh, such as requesting things through this Mark II request pipe, it's going to use power for this network. For every item that's connected into it, for every basic logistic pipe, every module that you're running, they all use power, and it's part of a whole new power system that Dave Bokey is working on, um, and it's actually, again, just been implemented recently. You can actually turn this off. Um, it's a way to limit the um, overpoweredness of logistic pipes, being able to set a huge crafting setup like we showed over there in our previous video. Um, you would basically, every time you craft something, it's going to use a little bit of power, and you're going to have to use, be a little bit more smart about it. If you'd like to have that setting turned on, make sure it's on in your configs. Otherwise, you can turn it off like we did here. So I can't demonstrate power usage to you, but I can tell you that every action does require power with logistic pipes now if you do have that turned on. So you're going to need this power junction in every network, let it fill up, and just kind of keep a monitor on it that way. Um, you won't be able to convert certain things you'll actually see when you try to request stuff sometimes on the power in the network, things like that. Um, that's power in a nutshell, guys. If you have specific questions, I'm going to put a link in the description to the wiki page on GitHub that shows how much power is required for each action. So. Right now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and I'm going to set up for our next thing, the soldering station. Alright, guys, so the next thing you're going to talk about is the soldering station. So the soldering station is a new item that was imploded to make frequency cards. I'll go into what frequency cards are going to be used for exactly in a minute, but I wanted to show you your crafting recipe. Not too bad at all. Six iron ingots, a piece of redstone, and a crafting table will give you your one soldering station. Now this item does require iron in its interface to be able to craft much like a carpentry recipe from forestry. Uh, you also will need to power this with buildcraft energy, so again I'm going to use that electrical engine from forestry because I just like this output and I already have power over here. Now when you open up the soldering station you can see right here it tells you you need iron there for the actual solder and then you'll put your crafting recipe here. And right now there's only one or two crafting recipes that you can actually make in here uh, for end products. The first one I want to talk about is the logistic HUD glasses. So we'll go ahead and put our iron ingots up here and we're going to look at the recipe for logistic HUD glasses. So for that we're going to need two pieces of HUD glass, a nose bridge, and two HUD bows. So it looks like a piece of glasses guys. 
Basically, we'll go ahead and make one of these components. The HUD nose bridge is going to be two pieces of diamond and a diamond chip set. And you might say to yourself, wow, this is an expensive recipe already. What am I going to be doing with all this different stuff? What does this provide me that I would need this? And guys, right now it is a new piece, and I'm not sure um, how useful it's going to be or if it's going to be cheaper or not. But um, without going into making all the different parts, uh, because there is a lot of diamond that's used, I'm just going to go ahead and equip this and show you um, exactly what you get by using the logistic HUD. So basically what this does, as you can see right here, it gives me the interface without having to right click with a build craft pipe. So I can open up this chassis and see I have a polymorphic item sink in there, but with my HUD glasses on I can actually see which modules are within my chassis pipe. Um, as you hover over it, it says nothing to display because there's no config options for a polymorphic item sink. However, if I go over to one of our other systems we set up previously, we can see things like the result of this crafting pipe that doesn't have a sign. It's four sticks. We can see that this provider pipe can provide these items, and you can actually click here when there's multiple pages to scroll through. Um, we can see the satellite pipe here has frequency one. You know, we can see over here the different setups that we have. So we have the provider pipe, or excuse me, provider module. It's able to provide 2,000 pieces of cobble that I left in this chest from our last episode. So you can see that it's useful for different things. Uh, for example, right here, I can see my terminus and what I have there, which is nothing set right now. I can see this chassis, which has an item sync, default set to no. And um, again, just basically what the system is able to provide, what's going on there. So that's our quick sort with no config options, etc. And it kind of gives you a little tooltip without having your build craft wrench. So you can see I can drop my wrench guys and I can still make changes here if I needed to. And I'm punching holes because I'm trying to click on stuff. So pretty cool, um, pretty expensive though. It's definitely more of a luxury type thing and probably more of a debug thing for me. I wouldn't use it normally. Um, oh, look at that. The new power system tells me that I got full energy in my logistic power pipes here too. So um, let me go ahead and take those off. I'm going to put my quantum hat back on and I'm going to go more in depth on the soldering station. So um, that's one recipe is to get the HUD glasses. Um, after the HUD glasses, the other thing you're going to be able to craft are frequency cards, and frequency cards will be used for logistic inventory sy system connectors, destination pipes, and entrance pipes. All right, guys, so let me go ahead and get set up, and we'll take care of those. All right, guys, so the next thing that you can create with the soldering station are called frequency cards, or logistic discs, I believe. Logistic item card. Um, now, it does say this is not a valid card, which means you cannot cheat this in. Um, these are actually crafted in a soldering station, and you get two when you craft that. And these, again, are not valid cards if you just cheat them in. Um, they need to be crafted in sets of two, and they are linked that way. There's no way at this point to change the frequency. The item number doesn't change. It's the exact same thing. Um, you get that set of two, and once you separate them, you're not able to stack them again. You aren't able to link them to anything else. They become useless if you forget which ones are which. So, guys, I'd suggest, first of all, crafting these in sets of two and then leaving them stacked until you're actually ready to put them in. To make two of these, um, you're going to need four ender pearls like this with a blank module, and then you're going to need an iron ingot to power your soldering station. So I've opened up my soldering station, I have the iron ingot, the blank modules, and now I have my ender pearls. And I always do this recipe backwards, but for that, quickly get a set of frequency cards. Now again, as I mentioned, you cannot stack these after you've separated them. So again, there's not any way to tell that these are paired together except for the fact that I only have those two from the ones that I pulled out of my soldering station. And these can be used for a couple different things. Uh, the main thing that they do is link pipes with the same frequency, much like the satellite pipe and crafting pipe, but again at this time they're not customizable after you pull them out. So the first pipe I'd like to show you that uses this card is the Logistic Inventory System Connector. Alright, so the Logistic Inventory System Connector now if you look at the recipe for this, you get two ender pearls and a basic logistic pipe. And these are going to work similar to uh, teleport pipes, and they're intended for interdimensional work, like an ender chest would work. Um, now right now, they're still a work in progress, so they may or may not work with ender dimension. Um, but the idea is that you can hook this up to a network here in the overworld, like say this ender chest set up here. 
I can place this down, open the interface, and then I can place one of the two frequency cards that I have in its connection card slot. Now, basically right now it's still a red connection because it does not have a matching frequency card. But what I can do is go ahead and place another one of these cards, or excuse me, these pipes, over here, let's say on this chest. When I open this frequency, and put that in, we now have a valid connection. Now normally guys, you would want this to be an ender chest, and it would be in like the nether, the end, or maybe another miscraft dimension. But again, right now, it's still a work in progress, so I'm not going to go ahead and mess with that and have a risk of crashing when I'm trying to record for you guys. Um, but again, you put your frequency card in here, it gives you a green valid connection. And basically resistance is supposed to lower the priority. So the higher resistance this inventory system has, the lower priority it will send items through this pipe. Uh, what that means is that if I'm doing things like auto crafting, if I was hooked to this network, um, say I said I need 20 pieces of furnace for some reason, or 20 gears for a better example, but I'm going to run out of cobble if I request cobble over there, it's going to let me set the resistance higher on that end so more cobble gets routed to make my stone gears before it gets routed to my inventory request over here. Um, now if I actually whack my request pipe over here, it does show me the 2000 cobblestone that if you recall when I had my HUD glasses on is located in that other network way over here. So I don't have to run basic logistic pipes all over my world or into different dimensions to grab what I need. I just need to be able to hook up one of these inventory system connectors to an ender chest, and then I'll be able to connect it that way without having to store everything in my ender chest. Because guys, we all know ender chest is like one chest slot, was it 26 spaces, 27 spaces, I don't remember the exact number, and uh, we all know that basically... You know, you can't put everything you need in that system, and we want to be able to have our entire storage system connected wherever we go. All we need is a linking inner chest, the inventory con system connector, a couple frequency cards, and we're golden. Uh, the frequency cards can also be used for one other pipe at the current moment. These are going to be the entrance and destination pipes. The entrance is right here. Destination is at the end. If you give me just a moment, I'll show you how those guys work. Alright, so to use our entrance and destination pipes that I have set up here, we're going to need frequency cards. Now, frequency cards, again, are crafted in the soldering station, and we're going to get that pair that we need before. So I get two of those frequency cards. I'm going to come over here, and these are basically used for um, systems that have items flowing into them that aren't being routed specifically. So, for example, this is an entrance pipe. When I open its interface, I can put one of my frequency cards here. And this is a destination pipe down here. And again, I can open the interface and put a frequency card there. And basically, by putting this as my destination, that's kind of like saying default route yes on a basic pipe or on an item sync pipe, which makes this chest my end destination for any overflow. But this will only work for items that are pumped into the system that aren't normally called by logistic pipes. So if something's normally called by, say, a quicksort module, um, right here, then it will be pulled into the system and it actually has a route to go. Um, remember, it does not pull into the system if it doesn't have anywhere to go. So as an example, I put polymorphic item sinks on each of these chests. In this chest, let's go ahead and put my favorite cobble. And you guys all know the wooden pipe which will extract from this chest, which is going to be my sword chest in this demonstration. So when I go ahead and apply a redstone signal, the engine starts up, and I will put some cobble in here. My cobble will be extracted out, and it's entering my logistic network, which has never seen this again, and it's entering through this entrance pipe. So this cobble has not been routed because of, you know, I requested cobble to go somewhere else, or it's been quick sorted. It's being put in by this buildcraft pipe, the wooden pipe. Now where's it going to go? Because it has a home in this polymorphic item sink, it will get routed here. Now, because this is going pretty slow from the wooden pipe there, if I put something like ender pearls, and I'll do that now, these do not have a home. These do not have a home, um, so they are being sent through the entrance pipe, and the entrance pipe is going to go and route it all the way down to this destination pipe here. You can see that the cobble actually also got routed down, and again, uh, this is something I haven't used before, guys, so I apologize for the misinformation. There was a polymorphic item sink here, but I think because um, it came through the entrance pipe and it didn't have an active call 
that's why it's being sent here. So this is basically for your overflow of items that um, that don't have an active call. So for example, before with our crafting pipes, we had excess planks uh, in episode two when we were making sticks. Um, you can make planks by having the f one piece of wood, you get four planks, but if I requested a stick, it only uses two planks. So there was two more planks that were just spitting out here. Now basically with the entrance pipe here, that's kind of solving that issue, and then it again allows you to use something like this with an extractor pipe, and it'll send it through the entrance pipe, and wherever your destination pipe is, with the same frequency card, it'll place your items that you put in there. So I know that's a little bit confusing, guys. Hopefully that tells you how to set it up. It cannot be an active call from the network. It needs to be something that's pumped into it, such as this. They'll be extracted into the entrance pipe, and then they'll go through regular system here. Um, while I have this going, some of the other things I wanted to mention about logistic pipes in general is I did mention in the first video that you can always connect buildcraft pipes here if I needed to, and I should probably put a gold pipe somewhere in here to make these speed a little faster. Um, but the other thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you have these valid green lines. So sometimes gold pipes are a little finicky and you don't get the validation on the network. Um, if that's the case, just break it, place another logistic pipe, and then put your gold pipe. Um, the other thing that can happen is logistic pipes can actually only stretch so far. I don't know what the maximum size of your network can be, but there is a max size, and I'm sure it's in the config somewhere. Um, additionally, if you do use buildcraft pipes with this, such as cobblestone pipes or something like that, at every intersection, you're going to need to have a logistic pipe, otherwise items will not know where to go. So, basically, if I go get some cobble pipe right now, um, let's see, let's just use, those are all waterproof pipes, stone pipe, that's why. Okay. So these are being rounded to my destination as I was showing you guys. But the other thing is, if I'm having cobblestone pipes, because I want to save on logistic pipes, and I have a system over there, and a system this way, on each end, if I put an intersection here, then we know with buildcraft, intersections don't work very well. You need to have like an iron pipe, or a diamond pipe, or something to sort that out. So with logistic pipes, we actually need to put a logistic pipe at every single intersection, and that way, when we have our network and we're sending items down um, paths, it'll be able to still know where it's going when it checks itself through this block or this um, pipe intersection here. Alright guys, so we covered intersections with buildcraft pipes, uh, we covered the destination and entrance pipe, we've covered um, the soldering station, power system and inventory connector pipes as well as frequency cards. I think that covers everything. Just remember that everything in this video that we talked about are work in progress. Um, they're all new items that have kind of come into play, such as the power system and the inventory connector cards. Um, so there's going to be a lot of changes, I'm sure. The soldering station just got a recipe recently, and again, it only has a couple uses right now. So uh, please just you know keep in mind that this video may need an update later, and I'll try to do that for you when I can. Again, in the links, I will be including the energy system link from the GitHub page. It shows what the currently uh, the current setup is for energy usage to use the logistics power that we have built up here. Um, it's to give an example, um, an item sink will be one logistic power for every positive sync answer. So basically, every time it sends an item here, or every time this item sync, if I put one in here, requests items that are in the network, that'll use up one logistic power. Uh, another example, the quick sort will use 500 logistic power every single stack it pulls out. So every stack that you have in here, if I put you know all my pipes that I have in here right now, and I was using a, a quick sort module, every time it pulled out a full stack, that would use 500 logistic power. And remember guys, this only holds 200,000, or excuse me, 2 million. So, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it will add up very fast, and it's a way to balance the systems out when there's so many items going through here right now. So each one of these is going to be using power if I had the power system turned on. Um, so guys, just keep that in mind. Again, things will be changing. Um, if you do have any other questions or setups that you'd like, please post. Otherwise, I'm going to continue with my plan and show some practical setups now of a auto sorting system for storage, your auto crafting system, and then auto smelting systems, as well as probably showing some of the things on the server that we're playing on right now um, that kind of demonstrates how I'm using the setups that I've talked about. 
So guys, I hope you have a great day. Please like if you can, and again, leave comments if you have any suggestions or feedback. Thank you. Bye-bye.